Thank you for joining us today. We're joined here by Senator Janet Wynn of the 34th Senate District and by Blaze's parents who are sitting in the, in the front row. Sam Woodward was arrested following a solid and thorough investigation by the Orange County Sheriff's Department in January. Since then, our agencies have been working together to develop evidence both to prove the charge case of murder and any additional special circumstance enhancements. When Blaze Bernstein went missing in January while home from college, he was, where he was visiting friends and, and family, everyone hoped and prayed that he would come home. People came together both in person and on social media. Sadly, after days of searching, Blaze, who was stabbed multiple times, was found in a shallow grave in a Lake Forest Park, not too far from where he lived. This office charged Woodward with the murder of Blaze and a sentencing enhancement for the personal use of a knife. That carries a maximum sentence of 26 years to life in prison. Today, I'm here to announce that immediately following this press conference, the Orange County District Attorney's Office will file an amended complaint, which I have a copy of here. This complaint is gonna add a hate crime enhancement accusing Woodward of intentionally committing first degree murder, due in whole or in part, to Blaze's sexual orientation. We will prove that Woodward killed Blaze because Blaze is gay. This increases the maximum penalty to life without the possibility of parole. The evidence was developed by examining Woodward's cell phone, laptop, social media, and other digital evidence revealing the dark side of Woodward's thoughts and intentions. The investigation is continuing, and we're looking for information that would help prove that Woodward, who is accused of being in possession of a large number of texts and images, and that he intended to murder Blaze based on factors of hate in addition to sexual orientation. These images are graphic and chilling, can be described as spewing hate towards almost every protected group. They may be described as racist, homophobic, anti-Semitic, misogynistic, and anti-government. Anyone with information that shows that Woodward's membership in any organization that promotes hate is encouraged to contact District Attorney Investigator Corey de Graffenried. Her telephone number is 714-347-8492. There could be other charges there could be other charges filed as evidence develops. We have no room for this kind of hate in our society, and we hope Blaze's memory will continue to burn bright as a symbol of love, understanding, and acceptance. You'll now hear from Senator Wynn. Senator? I would like to thank District Attorney Tony McCaucus and his team for their work on this case. The update the DA has just shared is a significant step forward in the quest to bring justice to Blaise Bergenstein and his family. Since this senseless murder occurred, Orange County law enforcement agencies have worked diligently to investigate the cr this crime and to ensure that the person responsible is prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Beyond ensuring that the person responsible is charged with the highest eligible penalty, the DA's office has been very thorough in its review of this case. They are not only working to bring justice to Blaze, they have also worked to create a path to bring justice to future victims. In their review of this case, the DA's office found an important gap in the California Penal Code, section 190.2, which does not include sexual orientation and gender as a protected class. This omission leaves an opening for those who commit crimes against members of the LGBTQ community to be subject to less penalty and punishment. In an effort to remedy this gap, the DA's office and I work together to introduce this year, Senate Bill 971, 
a bill that would have added sexual orientation and gender to the penal code governing special circumstance of penalty enhancement for a murder conviction. While SB 971 did not receive the full support of the state legislator, I believe it is an example of the DA's commitment to this case and sends a very strong message to individuals who commit crimes against members of the LGBTQ community that the DA's office will hold them accountable to the fullest extent of the law. Finally, while I believe today's update is extremely important, I also want us to remember the real reason we are here today, and that is Blaise Bergenstein. Although I did not have the privilege of knowing him, everything I've come to learn of him points to Blaise being an outstanding young man who was eager to make a difference. Many of us only came to know Blaise because of the senseless way his life was taken, but it is important, though, that we do focus on the contribution that he made during his life and the legacy that he leaves behind. Again, Mr. DA, thank you for having me here, and I also want to thank you for your efforts to bring justice to Blaze and to his family. Thank you. Now I'll invite Blaze's parents forward. Good afternoon. Uh, we are Blaze's parents, uh, Gideon and Jeannie Bernstein. Today is August 2nd, which is seven months since Blaze disappeared from our lives and the subsequent devastating news to learn that Blaze had been murdered. Today we suffer an added layer of pain from learning that he was likely killed simply because of who he was as a human being. He was so many things and all of them were good we are relieved that this amendment to our charges will enhance the sentencing for the crime against our son. Our only objective at this point is to make sure that maximum sentencing is an option to assure that no one is ever hurt or killed again by hate. As we look to the future, we see that the truth as to what happened to our son will become more apparent as the evidence continues to be analyzed. That is all we want now, just the truth. We ask that you respect the legal system and the process and allow there to be a fair trial. We continue to walk in solidarity with the LGTBQ community, with all survivors of hate crime and all people that are afraid to be who they are. We walk with parents who are afraid for their gay children. We walk with parents like Dennis and Judy Shepard of the Matthew Shepard Foundation who have suffered as we do and have made a difference in this world. They erase hate and they continue to do good every day in spite of hate and the tragedy of their son's death. We are you. We are people who are suffering because of hate. We live in a world where hate is real, and the people that practice it can be hiding in your child's bedroom and their computer. We continue to look towards the future and what we can do to make a difference. We continue to blaze it forward for Blaze and for you, and continuing his legacy of improving the human condition, one intentional act of kindness at a time. If we all started doing something about hate and about intolerance, we could change the world in a good way to prevent this type of heartache and injustice from happening again. We are grateful to the Orange County District Attorney's Office and the Orange County Sheriff's Department for their continued hard work to bring us closure. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So that concludes our, our formal uh, portion of the, 
of the uh, of the press conference. So we're going to be open to uh, questions. We'll take questions from the floor. And but before any questions are asked, I would like to ask you to uh, please take the mic and announce and give us your name and and um, the um, company you work for. Andrew Mullenbeck from KFI. Could you talk a little bit more about the online activity that Woodward had, whether he was involved in groups and whether even that had motivated him to carry out such a crime as this? I can't. I, I appreciate the question. Believe me, I do. Um, and uh, I think we've said about as much as we're able to say. We have certain restrictions about what we can, what we can say uh, concerning, uh, concerning the evidence. So, uh, but as, as I, can, I can tell you that we are um, looking for more evidence and, we've, and you know, the investigation continues and that's why we put out um, uh, this uh, inf question. Uh, if anybody knows or has any information that, uh, uh, that Woodward belonged to any particular group, any, any hate group at all, uh, please let us know because uh, we're, we're, we continue to look for that evidence. Michelle Geely, KCAL 9 CBS 2. Tony, just to follow up on that, what have you learned about his association with hate groups? Because photographs have, have been published, and, and is there the possibility that Blaze was killed also because he's Jewish? You, you've seen the, uh, certainly some of the photographs, those that have been published, and, uh, and that's, that's pretty much all I, can, all I can say. I can't really, I can't really uh, uh, describe uh, photographs that he had in his possession, I can't describe um, things that he had in his possession that might lead us to uh, to think uh, or might point us toward uh, uh, his uh, uh, membership in, in some hate group. All I can really do is ask that if anybody has any evidence to please to please uh, bring it forward so that we can so that we can use it. And, and I say that this investigation is continuing, and uh, and I do feel. That, uh, that there's probably some evidence out there, and if somebody would please bring that forward, uh, we, would, we would be very happy to have it. Chip Yost, KTLA. Uh, Tony, you talked to uh, one of the last news conferences on this about that omission in state law that the senator was talking about. What has changed uh, that you think allows you to go forward with this, this hate crime enhancement? Is there, can you explain how you think you can go forward even with that omission? Well, additional analysis. Uh, there. There's been, there's been a lot of analysis. We, as you know, uh, when we, when we got this, uh, when we got this case, uh, there was a lot. There's a lot of uh, digital uh, information. There's a lot on uh, um, cell phone, computer, social media, things like that, and uh, and it's taken some time to put that together. But uh, uh, but our belief, we very strongly believe that that uh, having done that. Uh, we do have the evidence that proves that uh, that he was substantially motivated because uh, Bernstein was gay. Because excuse me, because Blaze was gay. Yeah. Even yeah. I'm I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Sexual orientation is not mentioned in the um, in the special circumstance statute. In other words, there's. We don't have a special circumstance that, in addition to first-degree murder, can give rise to a death penalty or a possibility of a death penalty because of, because of sexual orientation. However, there is an enhancement stated in the, in the penal code that if, that if we can prove that the murder was substantially motivated due to uh, sexual orientation of the victim, it can, it's, a, it's an enhancement that can give rise to the penalty of life without possibility of parole. Millen with Channel 7 over on this side. Uh, just following up on what you were just talking about, what would be different, what other options would be available to you if this um, bill had proceeded forward uh, that the senator was talking about? Basically, what would be different, what other options would be available to you? Actually, it'd probably be more. My bill would not have made any difference in this case. It would have been for future cases, because our bill would not have been implemented until January 1st of, this, of next year. Um, so we were looking at the future uh, and making sure that there are special circumstances in the future in relation to special, um, in sexual orientation and gender. 
Um, so it won't affect this this case at all. But had this bill been implemented, say, five years ago, would that mean the death penalty would be on the table? Am I understanding that correctly? I would say so. I yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's a, it's a, it would, the bill would make it a special circumstance to commit murder uh, where the uh, murder is substantially motivated by uh, sexual orientation. And that being the case, it would give rise to the possibility of a death penalty. Of course, that would be a, available for a jury to determine. Tony, Michelle Geely again. Uh, this, in order to get this enhancement, you need to prove first degree murder, which is premeditation, correct? So are, what are you saying to us about the dark side of Woodward's thoughts? You said that, that you've now, that has been revealed. What do you mean by that and how does that prove first degree murder? Well, we believe that the evidence is, is sufficient to prove that the murder was, uh, was intentional and, and premeditated and, uh, and, and done in the first degree and also uh, done uh, substantially motivated by uh, sexual orientation of, uh, of, of the victim, Blaise Bernstein. Um, and when I when we make that reference to the to the dark side of his uh, uh, of who he is, his thoughts is that uh, uh, there's a lot there that that uh, that that just that spews hatred towards a lot of different groups of people. Basically, every protected uh, group. So it's just it's so it's hatred of of uh, many different um, groups of people, but. Uh, uh, but the, the evidence that of the motivation for this particular killing is that we, we can show evidence of that he killed him at least substantially because he was gay, uh, but we would need additional evidence to show uh, something in addition to that. Another special circumstance like, for example, uh, murder because of religion. An additional special circumstance enha enhancement would raise the possibility of a death penalty. Wait, what is no, no, he's talking, he's talking, about, about, he's talking about enhancement. How would this change your, your, from the previous? Are you talking about the enhancement that we have now? Yes. That raises the, that raises the, uh, the penalty to life without possibility of parole, but does not include the possibility of a death penalty. Hi, Amy Taxon from the AP. I have two questions. Um, the first is, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, I mean, you know, like Michelle was saying, some of these images, we've all seen them on the internet, they're published. The, the difference between, you know, finding hateful materials on somebody's computer or social media and what is it that you found that leads you to believe that's a motivating factor for him? Any person can have hateful materials. What, what is it that you found that leads you to believe that's what was driving him? And the second question is about earlier media reports about this group, Adam Waffen. Can you say whether anything you found on his computer was related to that group or showed involvement in that group? So thank you for the questions. Uh, I am not, I'm not able to elaborate further on, on the evidence. I, I just, I'm just, I'd like to very much, but I just really can't do that within the ethical bounds that uh, that we have. I, I'm just saying that uh, I can't. I don't want to point to try to point to some specific piece of evidence or pieces. I'm just saying that that the evidence that we have taken as a whole um, gives us evidence that we believe we can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that that uh, a substantial motivation of of um, Woodward was was that uh, the victim um, Blaze Bernstein was gay and. Um, that's about all I can say about that. And well, as far as uh, as far as that's concerned, um, you know that, and I think we discussed that a little bit too. Already, we can't. We're not really able to um, uh, to to elaborate on that. I, I I'm asking. We're asking if anybody knows uh, if that there's evidence. If somebody has evidence or or can point to evidence that he was a member of any particular hate group, uh, we. We would like to see that evidence and and uh, uh, membership in 
in uh, Adamwaffen would be certainly part of that if, if that's out there. Yes, it's still set for that day. Tony, any evidence uh, brought forth at this point that Sam Woodward might be gay? I I am not able to uh, to to comment on that on that. There's a there's a lot of evidence in this case, and and um, it could it could it's not all. I just I just can't make a comment about that, but thank you. Senator, can you talk about what some of the stumbling blocks with your bill was, and do you plan on moving forward with a, a new one, or just what's, what are the plans going forward? Well, our um, legislative process is coming to an end at the end of this month in August. Um, we will be in communication with the DA's office to see if we do reintroduce the bill next year. Um, or if there's any opportunity in the next three weeks, which I highly doubt it, um, because we couldn't get it out of the committee. Um, you know, um, lots of comments. Um, the case was still very new. Um, some folks thought that, you know, the intention was just purely the um, death penalty. Um, and, I mean, it does give it an option of a full tr jury trial to decide if the death penalty is on the table or not. At this point, you cannot. Um, and so there's, um, although a lot of my members, a lot of the senators uh, was, you know, um, understood the issue and, this, uh, and, and can um, understand why we want to move forward. But I think, you know, um, having it been so early on that it wasn't fully flushed out and most people were just hearing, you know, because remember, a lot of my membership are all across the state, not in Orange County, so they don't necessarily hear all the stuff that we hear here. Um, so we, we will work with the DA's office and see if we do move forward with um, an opportunity in the next three weeks or an opportunity next year to reintroduce the bill. Okay, I thought there was another question coming, but there's not. So uh, that concludes the time that we have available, and, uh, and thank you very much for being with us here today.